Oceans will roar with praise. Creation breathes to tell your story. And all who lift up your name. Because it's all for you. Because it's all for you. You are beginning and end. You are the Lord, my Redeemer. And in you alone I stand. In you alone. La 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 Salvation's all around me. Your grace has set me free. The words of my mouth, the beat of my heart, be an acceptable offering. Because it's all for you. Because it's all for you. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are beginning and end. You are the Lord, my Redeemer. And in you alone I stand. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are beginning and end. You are the Lord, my Redeemer. And in you alone I stand. In you alone. La 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 You alone, you alone get the glory. And you alone, you alone get the praise. You alone, you alone get the honor. Oh, ancient of days. You alone, you alone get the glory. And you alone, you alone get the praise. You alone, you alone get the honor. Oh, ancient of days. Well, how can I say thank you? There is nothing I can give. Christmas, Happy New Year, right? We're still okay to say Merry Christmas. We're not that far gone yet, right? You know, this morning I woke up and I thought to myself, as I'm always listening to the music, getting ready for what we're going to sing today, and I thought to myself, God, today let this be so much more than us singing songs together, right? Because this is more. God is worth more than a song, right? He is worth our, our, our praise and the glory and the honor all to him. So, God, we thank you for that this morning. Uh, just that reminder in our hearts, Lord, that uh, we gather not just to sing songs, but to praise you, to honor you, to glorify your holy name, Father, to worship you this morning, God, with all that we have. Thank you, Father. We praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. My 
orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom you faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, Your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have. displayed on a criminal's cross and darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand that's when death was arrested and my life began that's when death
of your voice all at once it's a gentle and thundering noise oh god all that you are is so overwhelming i delight myself in you captivated by your beauty i'm overwhelmed i'm overwhelmed by you 
God, I run into your arms Unashamed because of mercy I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you And I know the power of your cross Forgiven and free forever you'll be my God And all that you've done is so overwhelming I delight myself in you In the glory of your presence I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed There is no one more beautiful. You are beautiful. God, you are the most beautiful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Oh, God, there is no one more wonderful. You are wonderful. God, you are the most wonderful. You are glorious, you are glorious, oh God, there is no one more glorious, you are glorious, God, you are the most glorious, I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed.
I challenge you right now where you're at, if you're in the room or you're in your car, in your house right now listening, will you simply lift your voice up? So often we've been in a receiving end, so, so often we sit in a place where we have to be silent, but now in this moment is the time to lift our voice. So I want to challenge you right now, begin to just talk to God, begin to call out to him, say, God, you are faithful. Lord, you've got me through this year. I believe you're going to get me through the next. Maybe you need to say, God, I just believe that you're in the room with me right now. God, I trust in your love. Lord, you are good. Your love endures forever. Thank you, Lord. I lift my voice even now. I lift my voice against uncertainty. I lift my voice against offense and apathy. I lift my voice in praise and proclamation that you are the true God and you are worthy of all my praise and all my love. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, in moments like this, we look to you, we turn to you, and God, we pray the fullness of your presence be made known. Lord, I, I just feel in my heart there may be someone that's watching online that needs to know that they're not alone. God, that you would just speak to their lives right now. I pray your presence would move to them and upon them right now. Lord, overtake them. Lord, we worship you. And Lord, it's my prayer even now as we've gathered together 
and worship it in one heart, one faith, one voice all around this region, God. I pray for the fullness of your kingdom to be made known, God. I pray for healing to be done in the name of Jesus. I pray for restoration to be done in the name of Jesus. I pray for peace, which passes all understanding, to guard the hearts and the minds of your people right now, oh God. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we hold fast to Psalms 91. Lord, that you truly shelter us under your wings. In your care, we find comfort and protection. We will not fear the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence at night. God, we will not fear at all because you have set your love upon us. And we thank you for that. So, Lord, I would pray right now that you would truly open our eyes to see you. Open our ears to hear you, God. Above and beyond all the distraction, all the noise of the world that's around us, help us to see you and hear you. And Lord, I pray, open our hearts that we may know that you are with us even now. For you've said wherever two or three gather in your name, you are there in the midst of them. And Lord, I, I have enough faith to believe it's not just about being in the same room. But those that are in the cars that are listening, those that are at home, I believe your presence is with us because we have gathered together. So Lord, Make your presence known, I pray. Lord, I love you. I thank you so much for what you're about to do in and through our lives. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And everyone said, amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's that time of year. It's actually, it's kind of in between years. This is the, that one time of the year that most pastors kind of shy away from preaching on because nobody knows if anyone's going to show up or watch online because it's the in-between season. What do you do in the in-between season? I remember thinking about this last year, actually the beginning of this year thing, and what would it be like? Anybody remember the New Year's resolutions you had at the beginning of this year? Right, those pretty much died in March, right? Anything that survived actually January, right? Usually most of those fall off in January. But anyway, we, come March, a lot of us just kind of gave up and we went into survival mode, right? Things changed. Things went differently than we had anticipated. And yet in that, we still see God's provision. But here's the thing. Change is not comfortable. Change is difficult, People that live in a constant state of change, they're really not changing. They're just living in the routine of change. Change is always uncomfortable. Transformation is always uncomfortable because it means letting go of what was and what could be and laying hold on to something new, and you may not know what that new is. So let me ask you, how are you looking forward to the next year? Have you made New Year's resolutions for this coming year? A lot of people are afraid right now because we're like, I don't know what's going to happen next. Let's just kind of play it by ear right now, Pastor. Let's just see how January goes in February. How do you do? Are, are you looking forward to this next year with anticipation? Are you cautiously optimistic or positively pessimistic? What's your perspective as you look in? I think we all agree that as we look into this next year, as we end this Christmas season and we enter the New Year's and we move on, we're hoping for better. We're anticipating something better. But what kind of change are we looking for? And are we ready for what that change may entail? I want to go to a familiar passage found in the Gospel of Luke. We read it at Christmas time quite often, talking about a change that changes 
a transformation and really the message of peace that God provides through all of this. So in Luke chapter 1, verse 26, it says this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will be, there will be no end. There was an angel sent from God. There was purpose and intent and direction. He went to a specific town, to a specific place, to a specific person, and he found this young girl, Mary. And he looked upon her, and he says, Greetings, O highly favored one. Greetings. You have been chosen and blessed by God. And she was troubled by this greeting. You ever have that moment where your kids come up to you? If you're old enough, your kids say, oh, dad, you're the best dad ever. Have I ever told you how much I really appreciated who you are, dad, and all that you've done for me? And every dad in the room knows what's coming next, don't you? Your wallet begins to hurt, right? You know something's coming your way, right? There's these false platitudes that come across. This is not, though, a false platitude. This is a recognition of God's significance that he's placed upon Mary, and yet she's still troubled by this, by this perception of how God would view her. But let me ask you this. How would you handle such a greeting? If I was to greet you this day by saying, hello, oh, highly favored one by God, what would you respond with? You'd go, <laughs> no, you must be looking at someone else, Pastor. Not me, I'm not a saint. I, well, you're not dead yet, so no, you're not a saint, right? Greetings, highly favored one. See, what we fail to recognize is that is absolutely true. If I was to greet you or you to greet someone else, God has looked upon you and said, look, peace on earth, goodwill to men, and peace, God has favor with you. God loves you. Greetings, oh, highly favored one. In this scene, there's a process that begins to be unfold. There's a setting that we have to recognize that the angel is speaking into. He speaks to her of a promise that's going to come. You are favored. God has a promise for you, and it's going to be revolutionary. It's going to be transformative. Are you ready? But Mary's a young girl. And this promise is a big promise. There's going to be months before this promise is fulfilled, nine, in fact. There's going to be a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of questions that will linger on after the promise comes. How does she respond in that moment? See, the problem with a delayed promise today is that we have settled, many of us, we have settled for instant faith. We have settled for the prayer that says, God, give this to me now in Jesus' name. And if it doesn't get answered, immediately we falter. There's months to come. And we have forgotten there are times, there are seasons, the scripture says that calls for the patient endurance of the saints. There's going to be prayers offered up, and God's going to say, hold on just a second. Of course, you know, with God, a second is a million years, and a million years is a second, right? That's a joke. All right, anyway. He, there's an enduring that we have to hold on to sometimes. And the trouble, as I said, is we settled for it. And when things don't move at the speed or to the degree that we think it should be happening, we step in. So I'll ask the question again. How do you respond to this question, oh, highly favored one. 
How do you respond to the questions? God has a promise for you. Or you say, I'll take it, but it's got to be done by the end of the day. I'll take it, and if it doesn't come out the way I think it was, I'm going to make sure it turns out the way I think it should. Or are we able to receive and respond the way Mary does? At first, Mary's troubled by this greeting, but she hears the promise, and we hear her response in the following passage in verse 34. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child we born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. See, there's a little bit of a process as this unfolds. God gives a promise. Mary responds to the promise. And then lastly, Mary receives the promise. She's, the angel tells her in a nutshell, Mary, you're going to have a child. Several times throughout this passage, this word virgin shows up. And it's very significant in our theology. We understand it. We don't want to discuss it because it kind of gets a little uncomfortable. But it's very clear. The scripture wants us to understand this, that Mary has had no relationships with another man. None. She's a virgin. And for her to have a child outside of sexual relationship is impossible. They don't have intravenous, they don't have cloning, they don't have anything at this time, okay? The scripture wants us to understand that this promise in the natural is so impossible for her to accomplish. God's going to do something that only God can do. In fact, it says here that what is conceived in her will be from the Most High God. He will overshadow you, and the child that's going to be born is going to be called holy. There are specific designations that are given in this passage. We have to understand, this is part of this transformative work that happens in us as believers. We have to understand and recognize that Christ came as fully man, son of Mary, and fully God, son of the Most High, in order that we might have a full, redemptive, transformative work done in our hearts and lives. That sounds easy, doesn't it? We want to move past this and we want to get into the power passages of Scripture. We want to talk about the ministry of Jesus. But this is some big stuff here. That if we gloss over, if we miss, we, we totally diminish the power and the effect that God would want to do in our lives. Because when God gives a promise, they're big. They're not to be accomplished by you. And they may not be instantaneous. Are you okay with that? Mary just had a question with regards to the process. She says, how is this going to happen since I'm a virgin? She just wants to know what's going to take place. Because in her head, she understands she's betrothed. In her head, she understands how babies come about. But what God's proposing with the angel speaking is beyond her understanding. And so she says, how is this going to happen knowing the, st the state, the condition that I am in? And the angel begins to lay this down, this promise for her, because nothing is impossible for God. That's the premise to every promise. As you look into this next year, you need to understand that nothing is impossible for God. God can do it. God can redeem. God can restore. God can rebuild. God can establish. In your life right now, there's hope. But God gives a promise. There are over 50 promises by God given to us in the Bible. Over 50. But let me for a moment just focus on a few that are found in the New Testament that can be applied directly to you with regards to forgiveness and his presence in your life. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says this, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a promise. If we confess our sins, God will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. Isn't that awesome? All right, I want you to just make sure we're all here this morning, right? <laughs> Hebrews 13 says this, Keep your life free from the love of money. Be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
So we can say confidently that the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do for me? God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I want you to understand two things before we even go any further. God knows who you are. He knows where you've been. He knows what you've done. And yet you need to know who God is and what he's done. That he's forgiven you. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you're feeling alone, you're feeling separated, you feel like you're just handling this whole thing by yourself, that's a lie. It's not true. It's uncomfortable. It's challenging. The promise may linger for a moment, but wait for it. For the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In fact, Matthew 28, verse 20, the last thing Jesus says to the disciples says this, teach them to observe all that I've commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. God is with you always. God's enduring. Have you ever thought about that? God puts up with a lot for a long period of time and doesn't diminish and doesn't get tired. Here's a crazy thought. Can I just, someone needs to hear this. God does not get weary in loving you. God is not wearied in loving you. He's not going to say, man, I've been loving you for, oh, my goodness. How long have we been in this thing together? I can't believe you keep screwing up. That's not him. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always to the very end of the age. In fact, we know that God's with us because this is what it says in Hebrews chapter 4, another promise. He says, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us in our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Here's an awesome promise. If you're in need, you can approach the throne of grace. Why? Because Jesus knows what it's like. Because he's born of Mary, the son of man and the son of God. He was tempted in every way like us and yet, yet he hasn't given up on us. You think if anyone could have given up on humanity, it would have been Jesus. And yet he came to redeem us, to forgive us. That's a promise. Now that's hard because some days I don't live up to the promise. I know you all do. It's a pleasure to pastor you because you're so perfect. <laughs> it really is. But anyway... But we recognize that there's a process involved. We don't give up holding on to the promise. Because there's another promise that says, Behold, I'm making all things new. There's a day coming. He's going to make all things new. This week is one of those weeks. I'm not a fan of this season right now. And by this season, I'm saying I love Christmas. I don't like green Christmas. I'm just saying. This whole thing of bouncing between 20 to 80 degrees is just junk. We just got to pick a temperature. That's all I want to say, right? And my body, I've noticed as I'm nearing 50 years, I'm old. Half a century does something to a body, right? And, and the weather going up and down, my body is not a fan of that. And I'm saying, God, I need a new body. And he goes, well, that's going to require a change. And I'm like, well, okay, what's that mean? He goes, well, you got to get to heaven first. Oh, that kind of change. I'll hold out a little bit longer. Right? Change is uncomfortable. But we have to be willing to let go and grab hold at the same time. Let go of what was and what might be and grab hold of what God would have for us. Mary says to him, how's this going to be? And he lays it all out before her. He says, let it be to me. The first initial response, how can this be? There's no indications of this being in the natural, but tell me how it's, she's still open to it, right? She's not saying, hey, do you know Martha? She's just down the road. She's a good candidate for this promise, right? She's still open, and she recognizes with God nothing is impossible. Let it be according to me as the Lord of the Lord has been given. Mary received a lot of prophecy, a lot of promises regarding what was going to happen. 
One's going to happen later on where she presents Jesus to the temple. And, and as she's presenting him, Simeon's going to say, hey, this child is going to cause the rising, the falling of many nations. This is going to be a great kid. And a sword's going to pierce your own heart as well. Woohoo! <laughs> right? I mean, at that point, you want to go, Martha. Have you met Martha? She's just down the road. Maybe someone else. But that's not what she does. In fact, the biggest and greatest challenge in our faith as we walk through our time is will we humbly receive that God's timing and his ability is different than ours, and yet he still has the strength and the power to bring it about. It may not happen when I want it or how I want it. And truth be told, have you ever gotten what you really wanted and been sorely disappointed? I want what God wants because I'm tired of making bad choices. Anyone? Just, just a few of you? She receives. Let it be to me. God, whatever happens, I'll receive from you. Do you know what in the next year it holds? I don't. There are people making a lot of money right now telling us what the next year is going to hold, what the next year is going to be like, how things are going to unfold. We don't know. We didn't know how this year was going to go. But we still know what we've gone through, that God is still faithful and true to his character. Mary receives this promise, and I love the Bible because the Bible just doesn't leave it there and walk off. A few months go by. And Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, the one that the angel told her that was, she's about to conceive child. She who is considered barren, she's going to have a kid. You're going to have a kid. It's going to be awesome. Mary isn't married yet. Months have gone by and maybe a little baby bump is beginning to show. The signs of change are beginning to happen. People may not recognize it at first, but something is taking place. She probably is beginning to recognize it. I've never been pregnant myself, but I hear it's a big deal. Okay? I hear your body goes through a lot of changes. Right? She's beginning to recognize that. So she goes to visit her sister, her, I'm sorry, her cousin Elizabeth, who's in a different town. We think sometimes that she goes there simply because it's a time to go for a vacation. But there is some speculation that she moves because small town gossip begins to happen. She comes to Elizabeth, and something incredible begins to happen. Elizabeth sees her and greets her with joy. It's like that Hallmark movie moment. And she responds to this word, this greeting. I love this. I wanted to point this out today. Because before I even get to Luke chapter 1, verse 45, you got to understand where Mary's at. Mary's received the promise. It hasn't happened yet. She's beginning to see the changes begin to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. And now the misunderstandings and now the questions and then the doubts are beginning to rise. You're all with me? And listen how Elizabeth greets her. Verse 45. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Mic drop. That would be cool on my tombstone. When it's all said and done, blessed is he because he believed that God was going to fulfill what he spoke. I would love for that for people to say, you know, there's that Wade. He's blessed because he believes that God's going to fulfill what he promised. Mary is, is a couple months pregnant. Things are difficult. Things are uncomfortable. The promise hasn't come yet. Are you with me? It hasn't come yet. It's like going, to, you are under the Christmas tree this last week, and you, and you expected to have some Christmas presents there, or maybe a specific Christmas present, and it's not there. You got presents, but you didn't get the one you were hoping for. And so you're hoping that maybe it comes a few days later. Maybe it was just lost in transit. Mary's holding on to this. The scene, this moment, and Elizabeth greets her. And I want to I encourage you today, you who are highly favored by God, trust in him. Believe that he's able to fulfill what he's promised. And listen, listen, as we celebrate this day, as we look ahead to the coming year, 
May you lift up a song of praise as Mary does in that moment. This is known as Mary's Magnificent, her, her song. It's just incredible. Let me listen, read it to you in Psalms 46 through 55. It's kind of like Oklahoma, the musical, you know, where people start talking, all of a sudden they break out in song. That's that kind of vision. No, okay, seriously now. Luke chapter 1, verse 46, it says this, and Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembrance in his, of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. Wow. Mary's a few months pregnant. Did I tell you that? Things are beginning to change. Things that people are whispering. There's no baby yet. You all with me? There's no baby yet at this point of this story. And yet we see, she says this, my soul magnifies the Lord. Can I just challenge you right now? Is your faith the kind that minimizes or maximizes God? Are you a megaphone or a mute when it comes to the praises and the glory of God? When you receive, when you hear the promises of God, are you the kind of person that puts your fingers in the air and says, ah, maybe not too much, not too loud? Or are you willing to say, God, just crank up the volume, I'm ready to hear she says, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. But stop. I think this is where Mary gets a little off, right? Because, I mean, obviously Mary doesn't really recognize where she's at. She doesn't recognize what's taking place. She doesn't recognize what the next 30 years are going to be like, right? Mary has no clue, but she has the audacity to say this. From now on, all generations will be called me blessed. What? Based on what, Mary? I'm being silly. Just work with me for a moment. He's done great things for me. What did he do, Mary? You're carrying a child. Is that it? Come on, I'm playing with faith for a moment. But I know in our own hardness, if we isolate it, if we retreat, if we just put this off the side, we can easily become apathetic to the promises of God in our life. But she in the process of receiving, is able to magnify God. She's been able to recognize with a foresight that people are going to call me blessed because of what God is doing. Are people going to look back at your life and say, you know, the generations are going to be blessed because of what you have received from God. You trusted in him and you listened to him. And generations are going to say, ages from now, oh, I remember that man. I remember that woman. I remember what God did for them. Will you receive what God wants to do? He's done mighty things. Can I ask you a question? Can, I mean, come on, I'm just playing, but at the same time, I'm trying to be serious. Has God, has God, sorry, has God done great things for you or not? So-so? Meh. You know, I'm still breathing. I made it through 2020. What else do you want? God's done great things. It's been a horrible year. Come on, let's just be honest. That's the brutal reality. It's been brutal. Anyone? Can I get a witness? But at the same time, God's been faithful. God's been true. Listen to this. She says, God has looked upon and recognized my estate. Here's the thing. You need, God knows you. Jeremiah says, he, God knows me. He knows how we're fashioned. He knows how we formed. I was knit in my mother's room. He knows my beginning and my end. He knows it's the same for you. God knows you. Do you think he's going to give up on you? He has shown both mercy and strength. Listen to this. He fills the hungry. Pastor Adam, that's for you, bud. He fills the hungry. <laughs> he satisfies them. He gives aid to his servants. This is the message of peace for this new year. That God in his mercy has bestowed favor on you. We don't take it upon ourselves. We don't try to make it happen. We don't try to design it to happen. We trust in the character and nature of God that in his mercy, 
He will grant us strength. He'll meet our needs. And he'll give us aid in our times of trouble. That's faith. That's faith. When you look at the life of Mary and you look at all that she went through, we only look at Mary, unfortunately, just at Christmas time. And we forget the ordeal that she had before Christmas and after Christmas and even at Jesus' death and afterwards. And yet she never diminished God but magnified him. I want to challenge you. Magnify the Lord with me. As you look into this year, hear me, if you have ears to hear, as you look into this next year, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Don't be pessimistically optimistic, right? Right? Don't, th don't be that person, well, it's going to be horrible. We may survive to the end of the year again. Come on now. We're people of faith. We rise above that. He's going to know who we are. He goes, he's going to know our beginning and our end. He knows the path that we can trouble, travel. He knows when we rise up and when we sit down. The scriptures is resplendent with all these promises of God that he knows you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We can trust in him. He has shown his strength with his arm. By his strength and might, we trust in him. Amen. Tracy, I'm going to ask you if you'd come. I'm going to ask right now, what is the big obstacle before you right now? As you look ahead to this next year, what is that giant that mocks you? What is that mountain that blocks your path? What is that yoke, that weight that bogs you down? And you say, I don't think I'd ever get past this. It's time to turn to the promises of God. It may not be the way you want it. Change doesn't come the way we want. Change doesn't come the way we want all the time. As a kid, I was thinking about this this week. This is just silly. Just bear with me for a moment. I hated getting out of the shower as a kid. I love taking showers because when you're with me, you get in the shower, it's nice, it's warm, it's steamy, you know. But there's that moment Come on, there's that moment where you got to turn the water off, right? And if the windows aren't sealed all the way, if there's a little bit of draft in the house and that water goes off, there's, there's seconds that feel like an eternity before you can grab the towel. Y'all with me? And you got to hurry up and dry yourself off and put clothes on hoping that they're warm because it's cold. It's not horrible. I like the cold, but that's an uncomfortable cold. But here's the thing. This is just funny. I'm just telling you, this is how my mind works. I was in the shower this last week because I take showers. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. And part of me was thinking, I think, I could just stay in the shower forever. Do I have to get out? It's comfortable in here. But if you don't change, there's consequences. You turn into a raisin. You pay a high water bill. Right? At some point, you've got to make the decision to turn the water off and step out. Can I challenge you for a moment? Life is better outside the shower. Life is, this next year is going to be better as we step out. If we trust in him, God will provide. It's going to be uncomfortable. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what uncomfortable really means until I experience it and go, man, this really is not fun. But even in that, I trust in God. Trust in the Lord with me. Amen? Will you pray? Father God, we come to you and we thank you that in the midst of it being uncomfortable, in the midst of it hurting, in the midst of the confusion and the misunderstanding, in the midst of all that's going on, God, we still trust in you. Oh, Lord, let it be said of us, blessed is they, blessed is that person because they trusted in God to fulfill what he promised. Lord, as we look into this year ahead, we trust in you that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, that you would be with us. We, we trust in the promise that even now you're preparing a place prepared for us, God, in all of eternity, that we might be with you. We trust in you, God, that you hear us when we pray, not because of who we are, but because of the name of Jesus that is above every name. 
We thank you, God, because you are faithful and true. That your love is new every morning, undiminished. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your strength that you bestow upon us in our lowly estate. Lord, thank you so much. I would pray today with every eye closed and every head bowed, even those that are watching online, those in the car, you do the same right now. Right now, if you would say, I need that peace. I need the peace that no matter what happens, God's still gonna be there with me. I need that faith like Mary that's gonna trust in God to fulfill the promise. I've gotten tired, I've gotten worn out, I've gotten a little weary, but I need a fresh infusion of strength in my life. If that's you, if you're here, would you simply just reach out to God right where you're at and say, that's me. God, I need you today. Lord, I need you. Lord, it is our confession, as the prophet says, that we are weak, but you are strong. So we trust upon you, O oh God, that you not cast us off. A bruised reed you will not break, and a smoldering wick you will not snuff out till you bring about your righteousness. And so we look to you even now. I love you, Lord. I thank you for your church. I thank you that you will continue to guide us and lead us in the days, the months, and the years to come. We give you the praise, O oh Lord. And I pray now for you, church. I pray may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord watch over you as you would go out and you would gather back in. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength both now and forevermore. In the name of our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, be now blessed, O highly favored one. In his name we pray. Amen. Go with the blessings of Christ.